So let me tell you all about this watch. Um, Finewatchclub.co.uk Mark. He's a big supporter of the, uh, of the channel. And so far he sent me a few lovely pieces to review. Really sweet guy. And uh, sent some very expensive pieces just boom they arrived on my doorstep with no insurance no you know I could have run off the with the watches obviously he could sense that I'm not that kind of character but uh, it was astounding to see once again how the watch community is uh, really cool we all have the same disposition and we all feel like brothers but uh, every now and then he would on his website by the way it's amazing stuff he has one of these he has a an 861 a 145022 on his website right now amazing condition gorgeous bracelet jump on it if you can um, and he has a lot of really good stuff from the 90s and noughties and stuff late 80s but I keep an eye on what he's got in case there's something I'm interested in reviewing you know and uh, one day the Seamaster came up the 225580 and this is a watch I used to have and I absolutely adore so I said, oh my God, I see you've got one of those. He's like, yep. I'm like, how much are you looking for? Because I used to have one of those and I lost it. He's like, what do you mean you lost it? So I proceeded to tell him uh, this somewhat frustrating story about it. That it's, uh, it got lost in the blistering tornado that is the end of a relationship and a big nasty breakup and uh, a couple of years ago at this point and I had to get the hell out of there very toxic very abusive and I had to get out of there fast before I got killed basically not exaggerating I'm not being melodramatic in any way. It's only a matter of time before I wound up with a carving knife in my back or something. There was no more contact. I let it lie. I got the hell out of there. Started the channel. 
for something to do, honestly, because I was between music projects anyway. And, uh... Then moved here, then moved to Venice. Got the hell out of that town, too many bad memories. You know, you know how it is. And time went by and the healing process began. Very important. Get your mind on to other things. It's essential. Then I decided, you know, a lot of time had gone by, 18 months or so. I was definitely feeling better. And I assumed she was was too, like kind of a tough girl. A lot of these Italians are very mercenary, you know. Cold characters. A lot of cold people in this country. Heartless. It's not something the Irish understand at all. There's a certain just Central Europe has a certain I don't know disconnect to a lot of the characters something you get used to if you spend time over here anyway I figured time went by probably okay to reach out and say hey how you doing <laughs> you know be nice <laughs> I wasn't gonna reach out and say hey where's my stuff I left behind start off on a bad foot I figured I'd start off on a nice foot <laughs> There's me being too Irish again. By the way, this is uh, Academia. The bridge, the Academia Bridge. Fully wooden bridge. With a very th famous view. So, uh... Figured I'd reach out, yeah, and be cordial and... Hey, hope you're doing okay. It's your old friend. No hard feelings. Who knows, maybe she's married or something, you know. I have no idea because I'm not, you know. I haven't done any snooping or anything. Just assumed she's a survivor, she'd be fine. So am I. And if the conversation went okay and she replied like, Oh, I hope you're doing well. Then I could maybe say, hey, listen, remember all that stuff I left behind in your place? Musical equipment, my coffee machine, <laughs> watches, things like that. Any chance you could leave them with a friend or at a bar that we both know, I'll go by and pick them up. Here I am thinking, Well, I reached out and I got nothing back. And I thought, well, maybe I'm blocked or whatever. Okay. And a few days go by. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to call. Let's cut to the chase. Life is short. I'm going to call. She doesn't pick up. So I call again and she eventually picks up. I'm like, hey, it's me. It's your old friend. I'm not, you know, don't know if you got my email. Just... She doesn't want to talk. Okay. Sorry for bothering you. So then I reach out with another... We hang up. I don't want to bother a person who doesn't want to be bothered. Got the point. But I reach out with another email saying, Listen, not for nothing, but I love my stuff back. You know, what do you want my stuff for anyway, you know? Surely that's bad memories for you too. <sighs> Guys... Then I got an email from a lawyer here, a lawyer here in Venice, a piece of shit lawyer, threatening me that if I call his client again, he's going to proceed with, what did he call it? Stalking. Stalking charges. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me with this shit? So I write back and I'm like, listen, um, first of all, I do a little investigating on this motherfucker. And uh, 
not a very impressive character, but I reply cordially because I'm an effing gentleman. I say, listen, okay, I got the point. I have no interest in talking to your client, but she has some of my things. And I was wondering if I could get them back. Perhaps seeing as you're now involved, you could broker that for me and you can help it all come together. I figured that's a, if we need to do it that way, we can do it that way, right? <laughs> then he comes back and he goes, my client doesn't owe you any money. And if you proceed with this, I will, I will proceed with extortion charges. What? So I write back, I'm like, no, I'm not asking for money. I don't care, I don't want any money. But I'd like my property back, s'il vous plaît. And then he goes, he replies and says, if you continue with any of this, I will proceed with stalking and extortion and yeah, yeah, big threats, saber rattling. I'm like, I better lawyer up. So I lawyer up. I find a pretty good lawyer here. I have a lawyer back in New York, but and he's great on the phone, but he doesn't know Italian law, you know. All he can do is advise me. So I get a lawyer here. The lawyer sees those emails. He's like, holy shit, this guy's <laughs> what's wrong with this guy? It's clearly not extortion or not stalking. He's just so the first suspicion is like, is he screwing your ex? Like, is or is he trying to impress her? Because that's what it looks like. As a matter of fact, the guy could actually get in trouble for wielding his power as a lawyer in such a way, making all sorts of threats, baseless threats. The way it works in law is you, if there is a crime, you proceed or you don't. You don't threaten to proceed. That in a way is extortion. Let it go or I will. That's extortion. So, look at this. This is Campo San Stefano. Can you see? It's beautiful little restaurants, little cafes around here. The conservatory is over there. The musical conservatory is inside there. <clears throat> so, he contacts the guy and he's like, so the litigation, basically, it becomes quite obvious that I'm not going to get these, these watches back or any of my stuff back. Not without a big fight. And he looked at me and he's like, listen, I'm your lawyer and I can defend you or I can help you with this stuff. But truthfully, what's going to happen here is, first of all, there's a difference in the law between stealing someone's stuff, like coming into their home and stealing, or if you leave stuff behind and they don't give it back, it's slightly different law. Second of all, he's like, this guy clearly has the hots for your ex. He's like, is she pretty? I'm like, she's all right. <laughs> she's not as pretty as my other exes, which is part of the problem. I think that was her problem. She's like Googling me and Facebooking and finding, you know, comparing herself. But yes, yeah, she's got some long legs. Let's put it that way, right? So he's like, yeah, well, those long legs are working because this guy clearly is like a Rottweiler for her. And this probably didn't cost her a dime to have those emails sent to you. And he goes, honestly, he goes, I'm expensive. I'm really good, but I'm expensive. And you're going to spend a lot of money and a lot of time. And she's probably not going to spend the time. All she has to do is meet him for coffee once or twice or whatever else. I try not to be indecorous on the channel. So he's like, it's an uphill struggle. So getting back to Mark from uh, finewatchclub.co.uk. So we're chatting away one evening and he's asking me, well, what's the big deal? Why are you so attached to this watch? I'm like, well, that was a watch that, you know, I tell him the whole story, we get chatting. And he agrees, he's like, shit, shit, man, just walk away from that fucking 
quagmire. I'm like, yeah, you're right. And uh, then he sends me this video. Mr. O'Malley, hopefully this will cheer you up. On its way, 12th of July, should be there. All the best. That's it. The watch and a bottle of wine. No payment necessary. Amazing guy. Amazing. I mean, look, I like to promote his his store, so there's a mutual understanding there too. But this isn't payment. This is just it's like benefiting kind or something, or better. You know, it's understanding one person's thing and the least I can do is promote his store, which I would do anyway, because I love his store, I love his stuff. I think you guys, if you're looking for a watch that's not brand new, you're looking for something not extra vintage, but somewhere in between, he has that collection. So you gotta go there and you gotta check out his stuff. And if you want one of these, you gotta buy it from him, because he's got one or two of these. And they're way better than the new one that's not finished correctly or some of them aren't it seems some people don't have the problem with. so now I'm the proud owner of a 225580 again all because watch fan is awesome so that's that story guys a sad one but has a happy ending and that was it he sent me the watch no payment needed he sent it to me as a gift just there you go you have a history with this watch and uh, and there's a pick me up <laughs> and he put a bottle of wine in with it I mean the guy is a stellar guy and now obviously I do promote his store I mentioned his store I've done it many times on other videos and on insta so it is a bit of you know an exchange but certainly not at this level I would never expect a, uh, a watch just sent to me for free and that's what he did so let's take a look at it Reference 225580. Guys, I love Seamasters. I have a bunch, as you know. I've got to say, this is the prettiest of the lot. Seamaster is a tool watch, it's a dive watch, but with one like this, it's kind of, it's bordering on the, you know, very elegant, almost dressy level. This is the usual stuff here, the, you know, the international warranty. It's even, it's gotten all pinked, as you can see from this, from this thing, which adds character as well, I feel. And then it's got all the original booklets and stuff. You see, this is what Mark's all about. He like, he's into all the stuff, like keeping all the original documentation and so on from older pieces. He's on the hunt for that. And it came with this original little tag here original omega tag i guess the price was there all the way back there uh i guess 20 years ago or more and the extra links there it's really nice to have this stuff because so many of these watches uh don't uh come with original paperwork they come from an era when people just didn't think about would never even consider keeping the, the paperwork or even the box you know, it wouldn't even occur to them from a time when watches really uh, didn't have all this resale value that they have nowadays. Now, it, you know, it's like the card that comes with the watch is almost as important as the watch itself. Now, this model was released in the early 2000s. Uh, there was a slew of different Seamasters coming out. Uh, their predecessor had those, um, you know, skeleton hands, the broad sword, but 
but skeletonized. And there were many complaining about the fact that it may be difficult to read the watch, you know, in dark waters and so on, because of the loom not really being substantial. And I suppose Omega responded uh, with this gargantuan loom, which is actually the terminology for it. There is a lot of loom on this dial. Mirror shine bezel instead of a colored bezel, which some people don't like. I absolutely adore it. It brings it slightly out of the tool watch, dive watch, um, category and more into the kind of dressy sparkly kind of thing a sort of watch that's going to reflect its environment which is exactly what it's doing there you can actually see the beams the wooden beams on the top of my apartment right there now it is the original style dial it's got the wave the uh, rose milled wave not the like the new one that's laser cut it just seems so lazy this this is a totally different thing it's very difficult to operate a rose mill in most watch making factories you have typically one or two people who even know how to use a rose mill it's a very difficult machine you need a, a particular set of skills to operate one <laughs> sorry i just realized what i was about to say and i can't say particular skills without thinking of Liam Neeson. I will find your dial and I will mill it. But uh, yeah, this is Rose Mill Wave, which is just mesmerizing. You don't see it in certain light and then it catches the light and all of a sudden, all you can see is waves. It's crazy. This particular blue, I think this is a theme for me during this week. I've been showing a lot of watches that look very different. Uh, depending on their environment, depending on the on the ambient light, and this is no exception. The blue has certain reflections right now. If you see it in the sunlight or evening light, uh, totally different thing. It changes its look. The shades of blue that it goes through depending on its uh, environment. Absolutely wonderful. As always, I gotta say, the most elegant Seamasters. I made a big video comparing these type of Seamasters, not this one, but uh, a different one, uh, but from a similar era, to the new one, showing how the new one is much more blocky. It lost all its class. It lost all its elegance. These are the ones, like the curves on these ones are just absolutely perfect. And they've lost that with the newer ones. The newer ones are great watches, don't get me wrong. They're absolutely fantastic. But everything got more blocky. The bezel got more blocky. It doesn't smoothly move in with the contours. It got thicker, it got bigger. Uh, the doll got a little bit cartoonish, I think. And that laser etched wave, I don't really care for too much. Another thing is the helium escape valve, the much maligned, much hated, uh, valve here uh, on the new ones is just it's enormous it looks like a, a toothpaste cap or something whereas with these previous models it's very nicely tucked in there not pointing directly at the center of the dial but slightly north of it so a little bit off and uh, has a lot of character for that reason so I don't mind it uh, 1120 movement of course which is what went in all these Seamasters. They started with the 1109 in the 168, 1623, which is the one I have, that famous first luxury watch I bought. But that had issues with the rotor, uh, wasn't winding as well as it should. So they immediately replaced it with the 1120 and the 1120 lasted through this entire line of Seamasters. Has of course the date complication. And even though there's no Cyclops, this is a date you can actually read because it's black on the white background. Had they gone with a matching color here and white numerals, I think it would have been a little harder to read, to be honest. Again, it's a 41 millimeter watch, although some people measure it as 41.5, 47 from here to here, and a 20 mil uh, bracelet. Now let's talk about the bracelet. The bracelet is really nice because a lot of those Seamasters were and again, I have to bring in this other fella. They look like this. I love this bracelet. It's extremely comfortable. Uh, and it's what I have on this one and my other uh, blue James Bond style. I don't mind it, but uh, 
you've got to admit that this one is a touch more elegant and a touch more dressy around here on the clasp this is one of my favorite omega clasps it doesn't have the push uh, you know the quick release um, glide lock system uh, but I still love them there it just there's no more width you know some of the new clasps they're a little thicker than the rest of the bracelet this one just continues in the same line and I just I kind of adore the way it catches the light there isn't it beautiful very very nice and double trigger system here to release fully milled the usual thing and of course it has the extra extension there for going around a wetsuit incidentally nobody ever knows how to put this thing back in you can't just push it like this you have to put this in there and then that's how you close it incidentally just in case you have one of these watches and this always confuses you closing it back again i hope i just saved a bunch of people a lot of time and headache that's how you do it um gorgeous stuff no exhibition back on this of course you've got the hippocampus there rock solid though and those lovely waves again reminding you of that gorgeous dial it's something i don't know i, I just love the the design of these watches they're just so there's something about the shape the contours the angles everything they did with these it's still just they're some of the most perfect watches I think it's a one watch one and done a watch like this I mean you can wear this with a suit on with a beautiful shirt you can wear this to a wedding you know you can wear it to dinner or you can wear it to work it's a tool watch or you can dive with it it's just at that beautiful sweet spot between tool watch and bright and shiny and attractive with that deep electric blue it's just incredible let me stick it on the wrist all right let's put this puppy on i do, i always just feel so at home putting on a seamaster it's just uh, it just feels right this watch love the way it's so flat the 1120 movement is quite a slim slender movement so they're able to make these beautiful di deep diving cases that aren't like barrels on the top of your wrist they slide under the cuff very elegantly look at this thing and again just like that brightling i unboxed the other night reflecting its surroundings you know you're in a restaurant there's a candle on the table in front of you and it just keeps sparkling in your watch you know the watch as you move your wrist making conversation and so on uh, it just keeps picking up the surrounding light and sparkling and reflecting light I think that's a really dazzling thing about beautiful watches and there it is guys I hope you enjoyed that there's one last look at this beauty I'm gonna leave this on now I'm just oh, I keep falling back in love with this watch <laughs> it just keeps happening oh, stunner mark finewatchclub.co.uk you have a bottle of wine coming your way my friend an amazing gesture thank you so so much in one swift foul move you just fixed that uh, ache that i had that thorn in my side about losing this watch i now have it back thank you so so much you are the best and guys Go over to his site check out what he's got it's quite a collection i can guarantee you he also has one of these he's got a, a 145022 with the 861 movement this is much more the real thing than that new stuff they're selling so uh, go check that out cheers guys bye serio thanks for watching the timeless watch channel i'll see you in the next one
Romali. Hopefully this will cheer her up. On its way. 12th of July. Should be there. All the best.